Hi, Stefano Pando from Astro Vega. In this video, I will show you step by step how to make your solar image with your telescope. I'll be using a colored camera with the Daystar Quark Chromosphere H Alpha filter and an IR cut filter. And then we will go through all the processing from start to finish. I used my 80mm Duplet ED refractor telescope that has a focal length of 600mm and a ratio of 7.5. My monochrome camera didn't arrive yet, so instead I used the ZWO ASI 294 MC Pro Color, a great camera but normally for deep sky, and I didn't use the cooling system neither. Note, on the market these days, the 174 monochrome camera made by QHY or ZWO is a great one for imaging the Sun. The Sun, as a celestial mass of the solar system, has several mood swings from season to season, monthly and even weekly. Such as one day, it reveals plenty of amazing chromosphere details on its surface with a lot of contrast and prominences. Other days, it only reveals a sunspot or two over a smooth, uninteresting surface with no prominences. By opening this free app called Space Weather Live, we can look at daily data of each important features on the sun's surface. Let's see what's going on today. Looking at the yellow disk diagram showing the white light pass, I see sunspots. Sunspot number 3004 would be an interesting target to shoot. Then, scrolling down the page, I can see another diagram showing us the prominence and flare section. Here, I can see some prominences right next to the region of interest where there's that sunspot. Good, so we will make an image combining two images, one with the surface chromosphere details and one with the prominences. Another important aspect for achieving a great image in the final results is the seeing conditions. It's just as crucial for imaging planets, our moon, and other objects of our solar system. Before I begin my sequences later on, you will see how I do a proper focus when using sharp gap. Perhaps the biggest pain in the neck for observing the sun is the daylight, which makes it hard to see much of anything on your laptop screen, even in the shadow. So I cover my head in my laptop with a blanket, making a dome-like cover to get rid of daylight as much as possible on the screen. I slew the telescope and focus manually from inside my blanket shelter, without needing to get out from underneath it. Someone can do all of this remotely from inside their domes or homes by Wi-Fi. The Daystar Quark Chromosphere filter is plugged into an AC outlet. It needs 20 minutes to warm up before its optimum capacity, and I leave it plugged in during the whole session. When you turn the knob on the filter to a different position, it changes a little bit of the contrast on the sun's surface and prominences as well. It takes then 10 minutes for each alterations to warm up. Now everything is plugged in, up and running, with a good polar alignment. We are ready to begin the focus and shooting video. Let's get inside the blanket, open sharp cap and begin. As we see in sharp cap, there's the part of the sun that I chose earlier in the Space Weather Live app. The video output files I choose for my sequences are SIR files. It's what we generally use for planetary and solar imaging. I will also choose to crop the sensor size to a smaller resolution in order to obtain a faster video frame rate per second, which allows more frames coming in at a time. This is very important for solar and planetary imaging due to the average loss of 70% of the frames being blurred because of an average seeing condition. In this project, I will take 2,600 frames for the chromosphere surface area, but around 500 frames for the prominence part. Here I have my shutter speed to 73 milliseconds and the gain level at 140. Then to focus, I find the biggest sunspot and I increase the zoom percentage for the preview on the sunspot and adjust the focus until I get it right. I'll go back and forth with the focus to make sure that I'm really focused. Once done, I wouldn't need to focus again. 
It's very tempting to readjust the focus all the time. The average seeing conditions makes the sun surface details wavering going in and out of focus all the time. That's normal. You just have to get used to that. I am now beginning the process of shooting video, capturing frames of the region that I liked with Sunspot 3004. I will start with a chromosphere. I also like to narrow in on the area I like, but not too much because I also like to have a kind of wide field of view on the surface. So I'm not using a very small area of the sensor for obtaining the fastest frame rate. My average frame rate is slow at around 13 frames per second, but still faster than shooting with the full sensor size. Note that this quark filter has a 4.3 times Barlow integrated into it. This pushes the total focal ratio very high at around f32 for a telescope of f7.5. This is one of the reasons that you shouldn't exceed f8 or 9 in your optical train. And this also encourages slow frame rates. Now, the prominence part. I changed the shutter speed to 452 milliseconds, increased the gamma to 100, this is to increase the prominence details. I find that by increasing the gain level has a tendency to roughen the edges of the prominences. And I don't want that, so keep the gain as it was. And now, shooting video for the prominence part. I will only take 492 frames. My frame rate now is super slow, at 2 frames per second. That's due to the high shutter speed of 452 milliseconds. So, I will capture around 4 minutes to obtain around at least that amount of frames. Shooting on them too long will affect the details in an undesired way on the final stacked image, as we will see later on. Because, as time goes by, you can see slight changes in the details of the prominences. So, don't stay too long on your sequence. Alright, now let's look at the results in our SIR file video sequences with the SIR player, which is free on the web and easy to use. As you can see, this is the chromosphere video. And this is the prominence video. Then I'll stack both of the videos in AutoStacker application. Here we go. Let's open the file of the prominence video. I will keep 35% of the total frames once stacked, which produces a master TIFF file image at the end. If you have specks of dust on your sensor or vignetting on the surface of the sun, you should create a master flat image in AutoStackered. In this case, I don't have any of both problems, so I won't make one. Here is the stacked image of the prominence video. Now let's stack the chromosphere video, which I will also keep only 35% of the total frames. Once you are satisfied with your master TIFF image, you can import it into another program like Photoshop or PixInsight and begin the image processing. I'm going to use a couple of simple tools in Photoshop like Unsharp Mask for sharpening the chromosphere image first. Then, let's boost the U and saturation levels. 
brightness and contrast. Color balance. Shadows and highlights. Vibrance. More saturation. Curves to give it more contrast. I sharpen it one last time before I send it to Topaz Denoise AI. Apart from denoising and sharpening a little bit, it also gives the little glow and adds more vibrance. I process the chromosphere surface and the prominence part differently as two separate images. and then combine and merge them both to make one image. In other words, a composite image. Now, let's crop the image. In the results, I want to have an exciting image, which in this case is featuring a big violent sunspot with nice prominences. Let's clean up near the rim of the sun. Now, let's sharpen the prominences, but not too much. You want them to stay soft. Let's merge both images. And here is the final image. What do you think? Not bad at all for my third experience of using the quart filter and a colored camera. As you can see by watching this video, it took a very long path from setting up the equipment to shooting video and processing an image at the end. I find that the satisfaction part of the experience comes around the time of processing the image. But the excitement is throughout the whole part of capturing frames of the sun and observing it live. Before attempting a project like this one, a good preparation and acknowledgement of the atmospheric conditions and the sun's forecast is important to consider. I hope this video gave you a better understanding of a simple way to image the sun with the Daystar Quark Chromosphere H-Alpha filter on a short tube. It will be much appreciated if you subscribe to my channel and like the video and also push on the notification bell for more is to come. Pure skies, everyone.